All right, here's our red Terran player spawning at the top of Metalopolis. Winner of our last game with a pretty nice push. He is MVP Noblesse. MVP Noblesse. Clicking away at his keyboard. Here's his opponent, Tassadar. A little bit of GSL history. Needs to win this game to stay alive. And his name again is... NS Hoso Tassadar. Just in case you missed it the first time when I said it. Now, uh, Noblesse's worst matchup statistically is actually versus Protoss. So he is uh, kind of struggling against one of his own deficiencies here in this game against Tassadar. And we did see him... You know, not, none of the games so far have been really... Uh, straightforward. We saw a little blink rush that worked out really well, and then we saw a Dark Templar rush that worked out really fail. All the games have been really one-sided. Yeah, yeah, you're right. In this series, so with close positions, they've been very, like this, very cute strategies. Cute, cute for you. Cute, cute for you. Cute, cute for strategies everyone. for you. Sorry. By the way, Noblesse also apparently at one point in time went by MVP Dog. MVP Dog. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yo, Dog. Was I heard it? you like DTs in your base. Does it spell like D A W G dog? Nope, just D O G. MVP dog. No. Nope. All right. So, Tassadar. Only one name, but we like him anyway. Yeah, man, he's a hero. Not a very creative name, though. No. He's kind of stole it from one of the NPCs. Well, at least he wasn't like you know, Zerk Foyu. Sir. That's, that's there have right. been some Brood players with really awful generic names. Let me tell you. Well. We're, we can, we're not one to judge. Oh, a little bit of a hidden pile on there. That may be just to scout for drops as well later yeah. in the game, but he could use that. Noblesse moving in right now. You will see the gateway in the cyber core. No second guess yet for Tassadar as well. He might be thinking of hiding some gateways up there. He might just decide to board gate. We'll have to wait and see. Well, he's got a second gas down. Yeah. Uh, and Noblesse is all over that. He sees it. Oh, there's a second gas down. So it looks like he's probably going to go pretty normal. Well, I don't want to say normal because Tassadar has gone, kind of gone for this strategy, but into something abnormal later on. So it's a normal opening, I guess, but uh, we'll see which direction he techs once he Second kills that SCV. Wow. Huh. So right now, it, oh, wow. it, it looks again like uh, Noblesse is going to go for Banshees. Yeah, he's got and, um, hmm. exactly got the reactor on the barracks. He's got the factory going down. He's got the second gas going. So this is pretty much the same build that we saw last game uh, yeah. with the Banshees. And seems a little bit obvious. I mean, oh, uh -oh. if we can see in, there's some well, you see it on the production tab. There that hidden pylon at the, at the top of Tassadar's base is a Stargate. Stargate. Yep. So we're gonna see some Void Rays come out probably in the near future. I think most uh, most Protoss players would uh, follow this up by tossing down a couple more gateways and then. Going gateway uh, Void Ray using the Void Ray for vision. And this is actually probably bad for Noblesse. It I'm sorry, be. I'm sorry, for, for Tassadar because well, could be. he's going to get a Void Ray out, but there's going to be so many Marines from this reactor barracks once he starts producing them, if he is going to. Yeah, he's starting to produce them. Uh, but critically, there's a Starport out already, so all he has to do is make one Viking. He might even cancel the Banshee to make a Viking, and uh, that Viking will be able to kite Void Rays all day, and. Uh, Make a sandwich at the same time, it'll be so easy. Yeah, a lovely sandwich, of course. Whoa, 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 he was tied whoa, whoa. over until dinner. And a tech lab going down. Oh, that's that. Looks like he's going to be going tank and uh, probably raven, actually. So this will be uh, probably marine tank raven wow. push okay. from Noble S. A couple more barracks going down for Tassadar. So that's actually not as good because now he's spending his minerals that's on tanks banshee. instead of marines. Huh. Oh, he's a getting bit. a banshee, though. Some players do get a banshee first and just do a little bit of harassment and then get the raven. All right, well. And Tassadar is actually, he's going to, he's not even going to reveal it. You know, if one Void Ray comes in there, you can make a Viking, yep. make more Marines. It's okay. He's actually going to go for two, and we'll see if he even gets maybe a third Void Ray before attacking. So, nice thing is that you can pressure with the Void Rays from behind and push from the front with your gateway units. Going to poke up a little bit. Exactly. And he's doing. Yeah, that tank is going to shut that down right away, almost losing a Zealot, actually. And, and he can actually... When Whoa. this attack comes out, and he's actually going to go for a third Void Ray before attacking. He can actually do that. He can draw the Marines back with the Void Rays, and then pressure the front with the oh, Zealots to take the down Banshee those depots. See it? Oh, the Banshee sees Banshee it. Banshee sees it. Does not know the extent of his troubles right now, and immediately produces a Viking. He's going to need to go in defensive mode hardcore right now. 
two tanks out for Nobles, so he's doing okay. He decides to send oh, the Banshee in anyway. Close. But Nobles' army is at his front door, so there's nothing here to deal with this Banshee. He's going to get a few kills for free. Single Stalker, couple Stalkers warping in, uh, but four kills for that Come Banshee void so far. Race. Charging up go. on that extractor. Third one's a little bit late to the party. It didn't get the memo right away. And Void Ray out that. right now. That Void Ray is going to melt. Oh no, so he fast. can't lose that Viking. That Viking is so oh. important. Green's diving in. Void Ray's overextending. Oh, oh he no. loses the Void Ray. Horrible control by Tassadar. Loses two. The Viking's oh. going to be able to polish off the third Void Ray. And that was a ton. That was his entire strut. No, well, unless that Viking bad, is down. Bad decision and, by Tassadar. Oh. Either way, yeah. completely. Push back. Yeah. Uh, that Void Ray attack being his major investment for this game and not doing any damage. And now he's going to siege up. There's no chance of pressure on the front anymore. Right. Well, we can see on the mini map, we can see Tassadar moving his army back to his base. He knows that he needed those Void Rays to do pressure at the front with his smaller army. And uh, because he lost all the Void Rays, well, two of them anyway, very, very quickly, that's not going to work out. So now we may see a little bit of a longer game because Noble yeah. S really can't move out. Tassadar really can't either. Oh, the Banshee getting picked up. Yeah, they're exactly Five even in Harvesters. They're yes. almost even in Supply. So it looks yep. like we are going, and neither of them can really attack. Can't use the Banshee, can't use the Void Rays. So it looks like we are going to have this transition into a longer macro game. I'm curious who's going to put down Expansion first. Probably Noble S, since it's going to be easier for him to put it in his main base and uh, move it out later. Unless he brings SCVs. Well, let's see if this is actually a push or not. Yep. Looks like he will bring decide some to SCVs. just do a one-base push. Die, statue. Takes out the Menk statue. That's right. Not losing anything in that fight against the statue. Very impressive micro there. And I like this single SCV leading the way to make sure he's not unseized at the wrong moment. Beautiful play. Very smart by Noblesse. So, here's the thing is that right now Tassadar is getting that robo. He's going to try to go Phoenix Colossus, but it's just going to come way too slow right now. Yep. Tank sieging up for Noble S. This could oh be very gosh. bad for Tassadar. He's in a beautiful position. Nothing can come down that ramp yeah. to join Tassadar's main army. Tassadar just got supply blocked. He is forced to engage right now because he can't make any more units. Lifting the tanks with the Phoenixes, though. And the Zealots charging in, doing massive damage to the Marines. Is he going to be able to take them out, though? The Phoenixes wearing off and being killed by the Viking are going to kill all of Tassadar's troops. Mule being dropped. Noble S says, get out. That mule wow. is dancing. It's a little hard out there. It's going to live its moments of glory. Will the mule survive? And it looks like the battle GG. between these two former competitors in the GSL is going to end with Tassadar being eliminated from the GSL Code A. Noble S is going to get another chance advancing to the round of 16. Very, very beautiful games, and a nice little push there by Nobles. I gotta say, I thought yeah. he was gonna expand, make it a long game, but he had the army advantage there, brought some SCVs along, and that siege mode just uh, yeah. sealed the deal. He did. He was a little bit lucky in that there weren't quite as many Phoenixes yeah. out. But if there yeah. had been a fourth Phoenix to lift all four tanks, it I really would have been curious how that if that turned out a little bit differently. It would have been a little bit riskier. Yeah. So a uh, little bit of a um, uh, kind of a, a risky. I don't. I'm saying risky every third word now. A little bit of a risky move there by Nobles, but it paid off in a big way. He gets to advance to the round of 16. He gets to stay in Code A, and Tassadar is out. Eliminated yet again. again. Yep. Rough day for some of these guys in the GSL. Yeah, I feel sorry for him, but I do have to say I think Noble S was just sort of the better player. Tassadar, I really i am a little disappointed in uh, his control in that game. He's like, oh, I'm just going to A-move these yeah, three Void Rays that, that were my... I'm invested every single Man. mineral and gas I've had this whole game into these three Void Rays, killing him, drawing his forces back. I'm just going to A-move them and let a bunch of Marines, yeah. uh, Tier 1 units, just pick him off. Anyway, we're going to take a look at the match results for those of you that might have joined us late and see uh, what the results were. There they are. Bon Bon. bon. Zenith. Huh? Am, I, am I slipping on are your you, toes? Are you finishing that? my... Uh, that's all right. We, we should, bon Bon. I can say Zenith. the name and you can say the clan. Brown. Okay. Actually, no, no. that's a bad idea. Go ahead. Slayers, all right. Slayer's Brown, he's gone. Taken down by Bon Bon. Zenith. Choya eliminated from GSL by MVP Keen. Zenex Coca taking down Startail Squirtle in a move I'm sure a lot of foreign players will be very unhappy about. Foreign fans, I mean. And MVP Noble S 2 one Hozo Tassadar. Let's take a look at what's going to go on tomorrow. It's going to be Code S, round of 32, day four. 
Groups G and H, it's going to be any pro wow. prime versus Virus, and then OGS and Snare versus TSL Trickster, and then a group that will be very, very interesting. Startail July versus TSL Rain, and OGS Inca versus Huck. That's going to be an interesting game because Huck lost to Inca in the up and down matches. Yeah, and don't forget to tune into the round of 16 starting on Wednesday for Code A. We're going to see the players that we have seen owning up noobs in the round of 32, facing off against each other. MMA versus Hyperdub, Nuts versus Bomber. Those are all going to be great. Creator, new Protoss, showing some skills, is going to be yep. facing Ryung. And of course, Slayer's Buxer facing off <laughs> against the live for the TSL team. It's going to be awesome. I cannot wait. Yeah. We just finished, and I can't even wait for more. Will Slayer's Boxer be able to stay alive? Will he defeat will Alive he? to stay alive? Or will he slay and box slay. Alive? Who knows? Tomorrow, Huck is playing, by the way. This is the English stream, yeah. so I know we probably have a lot of foreign fans. Make sure you're tuning in for that. Code S tomorrow uh, to, to watch Huck. He's got a really difficult group. Yeah. So it's going to take all of you rooting for him to... Uh, for him to get through. It's going to be tough, but uh, I think he's capable of it. Yeah, we'll find out. He's got a tough opponent in Inca. They've got some history, so uh, we'll have to see if things come out differently this time. Huge thanks once again to uh, LG, Intel, and G-Skill as our sponsors. Thanks for joining us, guys. We hope you, guys, we hope you loved it, and girls out there, of course. I'm Doa. With me is Moltrap, of course, casting GSL Code A. See you next time. Keep playing StarCraft 2, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.